Yes, everyone, we have a uh, speaker from, uh, actually we have two speakers from uh, Deloitte, um, and they are going to be reviewing the developments in the market of GHG and related activities. We have both Jacques uh, Bouth and also Femke Perlo Hugiven. So I will have both of them um, introduce themselves and we will then carry on and uh, I'll turn it over to both of you. Thank you very much, uh, Heidi. Thank you very much, uh, Sammy and, and Johan as well for, uh, for inviting us here in this, what we feel is a, is, is a very important forum uh, to talk about. Um, it's very important, not just because of the topic, uh, sustainability, uh, greenhouse gas, and, uh, and, and the journey, and the journey that we are all embarked on, but also because data in that journey is what I believe is the most important topic. And hopefully in the next half hour, what Femke and myself will will present um, yeah, resonates and, and, and helps in contributing in that discussion. My name is Jacques. I'm Jacques Bout. I'm a partner with uh, with Deloitte, um, and within Deloitte, I focus on uh, on sustainability, on uh, on climate, uh, specifically in the European arena. I focus on the EU Green Deal, um, and in the broader context, I serve as the as the lead partner on the on the United Nations. Uh, where, of course, by since 2015, I got introduced to the SDGs and I'm very, very intrigued how the SDGs are now uh, uh, implemented by corp companies, by corporations and be embedded in the in the strategy. So that's uh, that's a little bit of my background. Uh, Femke, over to you. Could you introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Jacques, and uh, also I'm um, um, really honored to be here. My name is Femke Halfveen. I'm in the same team as Jacques. Uh, recently joined the sustainability team. Uh, I have worked in the energy industry for over 15 years before joining Deloitte, uh, and increasingly in the last years um, focused on carbon management. So at the moment, uh, my main role is advising uh, clients in the energy industry on the, um, finding their way in the, in a net zero world, and I think this uh, this this forum and initiative is a uh, plays a key role in that. So thank you very much. Very good, very good. All right, let's uh, let let let's kick off. Um, and I did find out how to navigate, so so thanks for that um, on the, on the screen. What 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 we thought uh, to start with is is bring you on the journey, the the sustainability journey that uh, that we see are a lot of organizations have embarked on uh, for a good reason. Uh, a lot of organizations have uh, have 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 declared uh, a net zero strategy. Uh, CEOs are in the open. The 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 whole the whole society is ready for a change. Yeah, I think so far is the good news. Um, uh, so, so what I always say is the why uh, of, of, of this is, is now pretty clear. What puzzles me a bit, though, is, is what to do and how to do. Yeah? And specifically also the how is what involves uh, a lot of data and a lot of unknowns, how to, how to capture the data, how to leverage uh, of, of, of existing data, and, and most importantly, and that, that's where the open group and open footprint uh, um, uh, group is so important, how to, how to also distribute and leverage of, uh, of each of other existing, existing data. So if we, we talk about the, uh, the journey, um, we, we look at the journey as a, as a landscape, eh? as a landscape of, of, of things in the past, things in the present uh, and things and activities that are about to embark in what we see as the as the as the future and and in such presentation on the journey of course it's also good to talk about the north star uh, what is what is the ultimate goal uh, of of what we're here doing and and with that ultimate goal what is the best way of uh, of of implementing it and what kind of routes you have what kind of choices can you make in order to get to that uh, the destination of of being sustainable and 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 all benefiting from that as a, as a, as a society um but before we can go to that let's let's first zoom in a bit on on the past right on the on the past on uh, um, the, the, a little bit of the historic 
perspective. Yeah, here, here you go. Uh, historic perspective, uh, looking, looking at this is, is a lot of happened. Eh? I already alluded to the fact that I served the UN as, as my key client. And in 2015, when the, when the sustainable development goals were, were announced, they were pretty much embraced by government, by, uh, by, by, the, by, the, by the public sector for, for, for first and not resonate very well in, in corporate society. That has changed, obviously. That has changed dramatically in the last, in the last couple of years, starting in, in 16, I would say already 2016, 2017, but also the whole societal changes with the young generation becoming much more vocal on, on the topic of decarbonization of climate. Also the young generation that is, that is entering the workforce has a completely different attitude to this topic than, than ever before. And because of that, things started to change, right? Um, Paris in COP was a long time ago. We're, we're now almost uh, on, on in, in the next one, COP26 in Glasgow. And a lot of things have happened in between. Yeah? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm from Europe, as you can uh, recall my, on my language, on my, my uh, and, and in Europe, we, we are very proud to have the Green Deal uh, uh, initiated eh, with a big step forward on the EU taxonomy uh, and, and things that, that, that European countries embarked on. But, but I'm also quite positive that other parts of the world, um, uh, starting with, with the US now also, uh, very, very quickly uh, embarking on similar, uh, on similar initiatives. So a lot of initiatives, a lot of uh, well, voluntary uh, steps that, that were made. Um, but I feel, and, and you see that here with a little bit with a cross line, I feel that we are at the beginning at the beginning of something new, the beginning of an era where we have more, uh, more re a more regulated environment, an environment where it's clear uh, and it's comparable and it's measurable what uh, companies and organizations are doing, and that will have tremendous benefits. Whilst in the past until now, that regulation was not there, the measurement was not there in place, um, it was it yeah it was more in the marketing side it was more on the investor relationship side that things happened so 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 I I welcome uh, initiatives like TCFD a couple of years ago uh, TNFD on biodiversity that that just uh, just kicked in and and probably one of the most important one is CSRD uh, the EU taxonomy corporate sustainability reporting directive that will be in effect and it will affect uh, more than 50,000 small and large organizations in, in Europe. And that will move the needle, I believe. That will move the needle because then measurement, reporting, transparency of, of, of data is becoming, uh, is becoming a, a completely different, uh, different league. So, so I said, it's the beginning. And it's the beginning of an era where we're starting to explore sustainability, explore it in our corporations, start doing it already, and start doing sustainability already in the organizations and across the organizations to leverage on each other's, uh, each other's data. So very important decade eh, as the UN is, is disclosing it, the decade of action. Now it needs to happen. Uh, otherwise, we are too late. Uh, so, so now it needs to happen. And when we're starting to implement actions, um, which we're doing, right? We're doing in 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 a lot uh, with respect to sustainability. I believe there is there are two routes basically you can you can follow. One in order to become sustainable and to and to implement uh, a lot of activities. And the one route is the compliance driven route uh, where where corporations talk about ESG, ESG ready, ESG ratings, and to and to and to make sure and amplify uh, what what activities are being are executed in in um, in sustainability and climate with respect to decarbonization and the and the measurement thereof. I personally feel it's a good route. Eh? It's a it's a route that will bring us to uh, to a much better world, eh? a, a world uh, with transparency, a world where we can. Um, yeah, where we can all be be better uh, as as organizations, but it's not our ultimate goal. So for me, the ultimate goal is seek and look for a purpose driven route. Uh, and in the purpose driven route, the SDGs, uh, the 17 SDGs of the UN, are the guideline, are the compass 
of organizations to, um, to, 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 to build their purpose and from their purpose start building and implementing a strategy uh, around it. So a subtle difference, right? ESG compliance driven versus uh, SDG purpose driven. Both are good, by the way. I'm not, I'm not criticizing one or the other. Uh, but for me, the, the root of, of, of purpose-driven organizations, taking the SDGs, embedding the SDGs in purpose in the strategy is, uh, is a route that will, that will clearly bring us to a stage uh, where being sustainable is in the DNA of an organization. It's, 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 it's included in each and every one uh, in the organization uh, and, and, and also in, yeah, from, the, from the customers to the employees uh, and, the, and the whole reporting, uh, reporting as well. Is my next slide coming? Yeah, there's my next slide, yeah. Um, so zooming out a bit, the journey, um, uh, current world, economically driven, uh, climate change issue, economical harm, society inequality uh, are, are characteristics of that economically driven world. And on the right hand side, uh, where it's an impact driven world, where we have uh, solved a, a couple of the couple of the issues, but before we are there, uh, we need to have that journey, and 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 we're in that journey together, um, where uh, where we look on the one hand at at being impacted, and, and on the other hand is make an impact to become that purpose driven uh, driven organization. With that, I I would like to hand over to uh, to Femke to talk a little bit more about making an impact versus being impacted and adaptation versus transformation and the activities that needed to be performed by organizations. Femke, over, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Jacques. And indeed, um, looking at the journey, we have um, uh, tried to think of a, a framework of thinking of what it means being sustainable. Uh, and we came up with this uh, uh, two by two, uh, and I'd like to uh, walk you through. And there is not an ideal quadrant that you need to, to get to or, uh, or a quadrant that you need to avoid. Uh, you really need to play across the board uh, to be sustainable. Um, and I think that you can see uh, for yourself where your company is on the journey uh, and where your company may not be playing yet. Um, and also where you could position uh, your own organization on make an impact or being impacted um, or on the range of adaptation to transformation. Um, and making an impact uh, really means thinking of the actions and activities that will make a difference uh, to the world uh, around you and, and being impacted is really uh, looking at it the other way around. So how does that world around you that you have no control over uh, impact your uh, company and your company's activities? Um, and if you look at the adaptation transformation range, it's really about um, how do I respond to uh, certain changes or how can I proactively uh, design my company strategy um, and reinvent my company um, to be fit for the future. Now, let me walk you uh, through each of these uh, quadrants, starting at the, uh, at the top left, for example. Um, when you look at making an impact and adaptation, um, and you can think of, um, have, for example, uh, water management activities uh, to protect your company's activities uh, against uh, a sea level rise or, or very tangibly as shown here, uh, um, uh, building dikes to protect, um, protect uh, rising uh, waters. Um, but also, for example, investment in, uh, in microgrids for renewable um, energy, uh, really um, take looking at the opportunities that, uh, that, that can arise here. And if you move down to being impacted and adaptations, you see a number of physical risks there. Um, and you can think of how your company deals with those changes. Uh, for example, the key change of climate change. Um, looking at where the physical risks are, looking at your company's office locations, uh, operational bases, uh, your supply chain, and thinking of what you can do uh, to manage those risks. If we 
look at the uh, one quadrant to the right, and the being impacted and transformation um, quadrant. That's where we arrive in the area of transition risks and, and social risks. Um, and you can think of how you can proactively align your company strategy uh, to play there. Um, so Jacques mentioned the, the EU taxonomy and the new um, corporate sustainable reporting directive. So you know that there are certain um, regulatory changes uh, being prepared, having been announced. How do you prepare for that? Um, how do you turn that into an opportunity also? Um, but also, for example, new technological developments. And I think many of your companies are, are very actively working on that. Um, and what is the impact, for example, on, on new technology acceptance or lack thereof? And how do you play into that? Now, moving to the right, you can see how your company's transformation can make an impact and contribute to achieving a more sustainable world. And greenhouse gas emissions reductions are, of course, a key um, part of that. But also, for example, the um, um, activities in water management or uh, protecting biodiversity, uh, safety at work, very, very important in our industry, uh, circular economy. And I said that there is not one ideal uh, quadrant or an uh, or a quadrant to avoid, and I think that this that this makes clear that uh, that you need to continuously think of where am I, um, uh, where can I make a difference, uh, what external factors do I need to take into account, what do I need to respond to. Um, so the infinity loop is really to reflect on how you are continuously um, uh, shaping and reshaping uh, your your strategy. Um, and also, for example, when you're looking at the data requirements and, um, and the reporting to to support uh, your transformation journey. So thank you, Jacques. I think that um, uh, I think that. Um, uh, gives enough uh, to understand how we how we look at this uh, this journey. Indeed. So over to you for the bigger uh, picture. Yeah, thanks, uh, th th thanks, Femke, and and I think it's good to 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 understand that there is much to do, eh? and 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 there is much to do at many different level levels, and much to do also interchangeable. Yeah, so 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 it's not a a linear approach that we that we are looking for uh, for for climate and sustainability, but uh, but yeah, but but there is much much more to it, um, and that makes it difficult because it's it's different and more difficult than than other business problems and societal problems that we have uh, that that we that we faced before, um, and also from a business perspective, much more difficult uh, to to solve. One of the reasons I think it's it's more difficult to to solve this problem is 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 the the, the element of data eh? and the fact that that the re, the reporting and the and 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 the the problem solving in terms of of greenhouse gas uh, and 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 climate is uh, dependent on data elements that we are that we have not used before and 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 i i even believe that some of the data elements are not available in the form that we that we have to use them and we have to report on them let alone the fact that if we have if we do have that data within our own organization how do we make sure that um, in, in in scope three discussions that we use and leverage the data uh, from from others and by others so 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 this element of data um, and, and, and data consistency and, and data transparency bring that into into discussion for me is 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 elevating this topic to a yeah to a to, to a next level. Um, and and as I said in the beginning, we will now start to get some guidelines, which is good because then the, the, the playing field will become uh, more uh, more more understandable and we can really focus on on getting the processes within an organization getting the data elements within an organization and beyond uh, an, an, an organization in line with uh, with 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 those with those requirements so um uh, so we're in a pretty good spot um but but a lot a lot of things need to happen and we need to 
uh, work with uh, with a lot of different parties of which I see here in this group in this forum a lot of them existing I'm looking at the at the at the platform players uh, the, the 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 big technology players the innovation that that exists in that uh, in those organizations uh, collectively um and and within those organizations also being able to uh, to bring those new elements uh, into into organizations um is what we is is what we need so so i'm really enthusiastic eh, when uh, when johan when when others uh, also approached us to 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 become member and participate in in open footprint forum to to contribute to that discussion because if we do it together uh, and if we together come up with uh, with with some of the answers of the questions that that organizations have today uh, we can yeah we can we, we we can use the next couple of years in in building those into the processes building it into organizations and start benefiting from the outcomes the, the reporting and the transparency that uh, that is much uh, that is much needed so what i've what i've thought about huh, uh, together with with with, with femke um, and 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 we did discuss it with Johan and and a few others is to have a call to action for this group and yeah, the, the the group of Open Footprint Forum uh, a call to action and and work together collectively on uh, on what we call a a, a a piece of eminence or or an articulation of the need for data data transparency. Uh, into an event that that we will all be seeing in the next couple of months in November, COP26. So we believe that that is a forum where this topic uh, of of data, uh, data transparency, uh, can be can be elevated to a much higher level than it uh, than than it is today. So as the call to action, what we what we see, what we envision is is work uh, as a partnership with uh, with Open Footprint. Uh, and 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 agree uh, with this group on the on the data standardization, the scope of uh, of of the of the data. Next step: use all the members, uh, and we have quite a collective brain power here in this uh, in this group in this call today. Actually, already, but work with it group uh, to uh, collaborate together on uh, identifying common challenges uh, but also more importantly identify common ground and where do we agree where the standards should be how they should look like uh, and how they can contribute to the to the to the to the big challenge that we have uh, ahead of us how do i see that happening uh, in in surveys in interviews okay, on on c so surveying uh, corporations cios chief data officers uh in 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 value chain organizations across many sectors um so not just in oil and gas not just in energy but the the entire supply chain um uh, of uh, of of the organizations and how they can use and leverage of each other's uh, uh data footprint uh to become uh yeah, better organizations and and report in a, in in a better way when that's done, the surveys and the interviews, we envision to bundle it together, bundle it together in an in an open footprint report, um, uh, with some uh, with, with some with some high level statements, high level agreements, and specifically working on that common ground. Okay? Where do we agree on uh, on 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 the items to be uh, to be handled? Um, and 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 if we have that available, say 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 around October then um then we can start thinking of an of an of a launch in cop 26 uh, from open footprint forum in uh, in 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 presenting presenting the results and presenting the common uh, the common ground uh, on data and elevate actually data as a, as a, as an important topic into the into the discussion and into the debate um and I think I started already uh, with, with that. So I, I, I honestly believe the why, why we need to do this is pretty clear. It's very clear to all of us. Corporations, but also yeah, CEOs and, and, and others, they really struggle on, on what to do and how to do it. And what to do and how to do. And I believe that this group uh, does have the, yeah, does have the, the instruments 
available to, uh, to make that happen. How we do it is dependent on data. What we do in processes is also heavily dependent on what we agree on the, on the, on the standardization of, uh, of, of data. Uh, so that's my call to action. Um, and, and hopefully um, this group and, 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 and people with, who are attending um, can comment on it now of course in the chat or in the q a and now is the moment but but also uh, later in the next couple of days uh, send us an email give your opinion give your feedback and and we will uh, we will collect it uh, and and bring it back to um, uh, to the well to the group as well um so with that before uh, sammy and heidi i I'm, i open it up for q a i i can't see it but i'm sure that uh, that that you're looking at it um, so we look at it as a journey, yeah, as, as, as a journey of, of multiple years, uh, where in the past, on the, on the left-hand side, uh, a lot of things happened, uh, a lot of movements, a lot of things happened. Now we are in the decade of action, so we, 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 we need to stop exploring, we need to start doing, actually, yeah, doing sustainability is, is what we need to do now. And, and where that will bring us is, yeah, that's what the future the future will tell, um, but but I'm looking at a very positive, sunny and bright future uh, for all of us. Where, yeah, where where more regulation will not stop us, but will actually help us in implementing better uh, better processes. So with that, Johan, Sammy, any any questions? Uh, Jack, uh, thanks very much. And um, a little, little bit of history to this, all of this. We we as an open footprint. A couple of months ago, said also within really Open Footprint, how do we get a more top-down approach in acceptance of uh, of the work we're doing, and that's really was the kickoff with the work we did with Deloitte. We had to meet with Jack and all the people at, at Deloitte, and Jack came up with uh, this approach and this way forward, which I fully, fully support, and we're going to make it work with all of you in the in the coming months. But it gives a little bit the history where we're coming from and why I believe it's very important for us to. Um, to move this forward together with Deloitte and uh, and the members, of course. So that was a little bit what we were coming from. Um, Sammy, anything you want to add to that? No, I just, uh, uh, Jack, just to 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 comment. I mean, first of all, for for anybody in the audience that does have questions around it, please do submit it via Q and A. I I I don't see any questions in the Q and A yet, Jack, but I. I do have my own question, maybe to pose of you, if I may. So, of course. Um, I, I like the the glass mostly full. That sunny, optimistic view that you got. Uh, I think it's refreshing. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put the glass half empty because you know this is hard. This is this is difficult, right? So in your perspective, you know what do you see, or, the, or is the biggest barrier or the biggest resistance to to achieving the sunny future that you present, and and what can we do about that? Yeah, yeah, of course, that's, 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 that's an element as well. Huh? And, and you're absolutely right. It's, it ain't easy. Huh? It, it's not easy because we, we've not done it before. One and two, it's, it's, it is also on a topic that we've never done it before. Huh? And, and, and on the element of data, I also believe that some of the puzzles, some of the elements of the puzzle do not exist yet huh? do not exist. So we also need to keep innovating in technological uh, uh, elements in order to uh, to invent new elements yeah? and and some of course is easy right the reporting is easy the trading of of uh, of, of emission rights is easy but but for example the element of of uh, co2 emissions and um, the whole farming of it or the storage storage and farming of uh, of, of of carbon uh, into the soil for example and yeah? so there are there are some new technical elements that still need to be invented before we can move it to normal processes where we do reporting and trading and, and financing. And that's that, that's what I call more bread and, bread and butter, yeah, risk models. Uh, um, that's the bread and butter side of, of what we do know. Um, but without those those nuggets of, of new elements, it's it's meaningless. So so we need to keep innovating and 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 put that into the mix as well. Good. No, thank you. Appreciate that. Good. Any other last questions from the audience? Once, twice. All right. Well, 
Jacques, Femke, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, Heidi, maybe, uh, or any closing thoughts, Jacques, from your perspective, and then back to, to, to Heidi, I think. No, not for me. Please, please send us an email. Send us an email on the call to action. What do you know? What do you like? What do you don't like? Uh, and how would you like to contribute uh, with with Johan, with with others in this uh, in this area? Thank you so much, Heidi. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you both. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you, Femka. That was terrific. Really enjoyed the the sustainability journey and the discussion around the SDGs and ESG. As we know, that's what is trending and particularly in the EU and uh, getting a lot of traction in the, in the US right now as well. And so call to action by all means, everyone uh, think about it, think about how you would like to contribute, how you would like to get involved and we welcome everyone to, uh, to, to join us in, in this wonderful uh, process of OFP.